Good morning. Today is Tuesday, November 2nd, 2021. Rivka and Yitzchak have twin sons, Esav and Yaakov. Esav was evil. He was bad. He was wild. Yaakov was righteous. He was good. He was pure. Yitzchak wants to bless his firstborn son, Esav. And Rivka feels strongly that the blessing should go to Yaakov. First of all, Rivka loves Yaakov more than she loves Esav. She sees in him better qualities, more suited to receive these blessings. But the question that all the commentators wrestle with is why did Yitzchak think that Esav should receive this blessing? Among the commentators, classic commentators, there are two basic approaches with variations in between each of them, but two basic approaches. One approach is that Esav fooled his father. Esav pretended in his father's presence to be holy and good. Yitzchak was old. He was nearly blind. He didn't see who Esav really was. And that's why Yitzchak wanted to give the blessing to Esav. Rashi appears to take this approach. Others see Yitzchak, well understood his son Esav, knew his character and his actions, his temperament. And because of his character, Yitzchak thought the blessing should go to Esav. For various reasons, perhaps like we suggested yesterday, that Yitzchak wanted his blessing of material plenty to go to Esav in order to form a partnership with Yaakov and his spiritual pursuits. So that the effect would be one brother would help the other create a partnership. Okay, that's one approach and there are other approaches along that line. A close reading of the text of the Torah suggests a much simpler reason. The Torah says that Yitzchak loved Esav kitzayid befiv because Esav provided Yitzchak with food which Yitzchak needed and appreciated and wanted to reward. But this is the central question of our Parsha. Why would Yitzchak, our patriarch, who together with his father, Avraham, and later with his son, Yaakov, they form Am Yisrael, the Jewish nation. Why would Yitzchak choose a murderous, idolatrous, materialistic Esav? For a blessing. So I want to share with you an answer. I have never seen this answer in any classic source, but it is profoundly true. And it is relevant to every single one of us. I first shared this answer with another group 30 years ago. Exactly. And since that time, I have tried to live this answer. I've tried to urge others to live this answer. And I am convinced it is more true today and more applicable today than when I first formulated it 30 years ago. And the answer is that the assumption of the question is false. The assumption 
that Yitzchak would give a blessing to a good son and not to a bad son. That assumption is harmful, destructive, and false. Because here's the truth. Every child at some point and in some way disappoints their parents. Every child, no exceptions. It is the nature of children. It is the nature of having children. At some point, in some way, to disappoint their parents. Just as every person who is a child of God, in some way, at some point, disappoints God. No exceptions. And just like in our relationship with God, where our disappointing God is a cause for being held accountable and a call to be better, but is not a cause for diminishing the love God has for us, so too for every parent with Without exception, that includes every one of us, and that also includes the parents of every one of us. When we are disappointed in our child, that, it is, an, that is an occasion to try to help the child improve, but it should not it must not have any effect on our love for that child. Yitzchak knows and understands Esav, who he is, what is his character, what is his behavior. If the question in our parsha was, which son should be chosen to be the rabbi of the family, I think Yitzchak would have agreed that Yaakov should be the rabbi appointed to the family. But that's not the question. This blessing is about the love of a father for a firstborn son. Disregarding that child's behavior, it's not relevant to this conversation. The love is not diminished. It is never diminished. There is and should never be any connection between those two. There's a famous, often repeated story. I've heard it told about Rabbi Yisrael Salanter, I know that it's also told about Rabbi Avram Cook, probably told about others. A man came to the rabbi and said, Rabbi, my son is not acting properly. He doesn't listen. He's going in the wrong way. What should I do? And the rabbi said to this man, you should love your son. The man goes home promising to do that. And a few weeks later, the man comes back to the rabbi and says, Rabbi, I followed your advice. I love my son, but it's not helping. In fact, he's getting worse. He's falling further from the right path. What should I do? And the rabbi says to the man, love your son more. The point of that story is not that your love will make your child better. It won't. It's not true. The point is that the love of a child is not affected by disappointment or disagreement. And the point of the story is that this must be expressed 
convincingly and unambiguously by every parent to every child. I think this is the primary lesson of our Parsha. It is the advice I share whenever a parent disappointed in a child comes to speak to me. It's what I try, imperfectly, I try to practice myself at the same time as I recognize that my parents had the same struggle. But only in this way do we truly love our children, all our children, at every moment. And that's why there is no question in Yitzchak's mind, knowing Esav as he does, the love is not affected. And the blessing that expresses that love must be given to Esav. My friends, I want to wish you a great day. And I look forward to seeing all of you soon in person.